so grateful to the whole wedded community, over 800,000 people around the world. I'm so grateful to the people who are part of our global impact committee and who are some of the hosts of our program. Before I introduce the host of the Health Innovation Program, I would like to remind everyone that this is live. Please use, use hashtag Webit over Twitter to ask your questions to our amazing, amazing participants following up uh, this discussion. Hashtag Twitter live and your questions could be heard because we have um, uh, someone who is going to take care of the voice of the audience to be heard globally. This is Miss Bianca Salonga, who is a correspondent of Forbes. But I, now I would like to give a floor and to welcome to our virtual studio a dear friend, a phenomenal person with a huge heart, bigger than his own body, and <laughs> someone who has respected the world with his bright visions and visionary leadership. This is a dear friend of mine, as you can say, by the words I'm using. Ladies and gentlemen, the host of Webit's Health Innovation Program, Dr. Shafi Ahmed. Dear Webiters, the host of Webit Virtual's Health Innovation Program, Professor Shafi Ahmed. Hey. Hey, hi. Thanks so much, Clement. And thanks for the invitation again to host this amazing summit with you. Thank you so much, Shafi, for taking time, for investing your precious time uh, while you were at the forefront of, um, of being there on the war with Corona-19 and COVID-19 and still be able to, to commit time and efforts to curate together with us that uh, wonderful, wonderful discussion. And in order to move on as soon as possible, I would like to ask you for a quick wrap up. We were together with uh, Professor Ciccone uh, from uh, Milan, um, Lombardy being there uh, with uh, all the, the victims of COVID in the intensive care of the most, uh, the heaviest um, uh, hurt region in Europe. And we were with uh, the fighters, uh, the medical doctors and scientists from China uh, a week and a few days ago. Uh, please uh, share with us uh, uh, your, um, your couple of words on, on what has changed during the past week. So thanks, Pam. Of course, we've... Um... It's been an incredibly important week for the world, of course. Yeah, we, were, we had great speakers from Wuhan, China, and Milan, the epicenters uh, of the pandemic. We learned a lot from the management of medical conditions and how they managed to reduce and flatten the curve over the last few months. And last week, we've seen now over 2 million cases uh, of COVID. And sadly, we've seen almost 140,000 deaths worldwide. We have seen some countries still rising with incidents, others thinking about whether they should pursue lockdown or strategize about the economy further. We're seeing global companies come together to produce PPE, personal protective equipment, and also, amazingly, the community using 3D printers to support this program. We're seeing hospitals built very quickly. For example, I've been involved with the Nightingale Hospital in UK, which is a military hospital built over two weeks for 4,000 ventilated beds. We're seeing similar things around the world. We're seeing therapies and clinical trials being pushed quickly to ensure that we are safe and bring out medication and therapies as fast as we can around the world. So it's been a really interesting time for the world. And obviously, we're still thinking about how we push forward. And we have a global community here, with the main speakers from around the world, because I think we will say, Plamen, this is a global pandemic requiring global solutions. We need to learn from one another globally how we manage different populations and different kind of outcomes for this COVID-19. Hence, we've got this panel together from Brazil, from North America, and from Africa. Absolutely. Dear Shafi, um, your words speak to everyone's heart. And indeed, the word global now has a different meaning. While economists predict that globalization will become regionalization or even, even something else, now we see that global comes with the meaning of, hey, we are all together in this and we'd better find a way to get out of it because that's the only way we can do it. And humankind has proven its ability to survive. Now we have to prove that it's not survival. It is back to normal, whatever the new normal is and bringing that further together. And without further ado, I suggest, if you don't mind, dear Shafi, to invite our first guest, 
a truly, truly, truly established global leader who is um, on the forefront of, um, of, um, of the, uh, a country like Canada uh, being there and who will give us the, the feedback and also the, the, the update of what is happening there. I would like to invite with us um, uh, Senator Tony Lofreda. Shafi, please tell us more about our first guest. It's a great pleasure to announce uh, our first speaker. Um, and Senator Tony Lafredo is a, a Canadian Senator in the Canadian Parliament. He was the first Canadian born Senator of Italian origin uh, in the Senate itself. He was a warm, former Vice Chairman and Senior Executive at Canada's largest bank, RBC Royal Bank of Canada. He is a CPA by profession and has over 35 years financial industry experience, which is obviously very important in this current climate of COVID-19. Of course, it's more to say that he's been happily married for 35 years and has two amazing children. So thank you very much for joining us, Senator Lafreda. Thank you. Thank you for having me and uh, thank you for organizing this uh, virtual conference uh, for the benefit of everybody across the world. And uh, I think you said it well, we have to share hope and uh, hope is important. And uh, so in Canada, the situation in Canada is, uh, I'll run through the numbers, and we hear these numbers every day, but it's important to share hope. And um, we have close to 29,000 confirmed cases, 28,379. Important, 9,000 have recovered. So 8,979 have recovered, and over 1,000 fatalities, 1,010 people have died of, of the virus. So my condolences, first and foremost, go out to the families, and friends of, of our fatalities and of all individuals uh, and victims of this terrible virus. So my condolences go out to everybody and my sympathies to everybody. But we are in Canada, like the rest of the world, uh, very, very affected by all of this. And uh, we're looking for uh, a medical response. I think the economic response, we've understood that the economic response and the economic actions are sometimes easier to obtain or to process than the medical response. And so the values around the world, I think after this crisis will change. I think the medical field will be more valued. Uh, research, health, and, and uh, our heroes will also change. And you know who our he heroes will be, right? Uh, in this crisis, our heroes are the health workers, the essential workers, the frontline workers, the deliverers, the truck drivers. I'd like to thank all our heroes. A sincere thank you to all of you for keeping the world running and healthy and going. Thank you, Senator. Thanks for joining. I would like to ask you to share a little story on uh, Lewis Thurman and the required measures and attributes to success in, uh, in many situations. Thank you very much. Thank you for the question. And I, I guess you've heard uh, some of my conferences previously and <clears throat> at the, uh, you know, through our careers and they've been involved with universities on the board of governors and uh, did some teaching and lecturing and our youth, I think the power, empowerment of youth for every organization should be a priority because that is our future. The youth is our future. Although we must take great care of our elders and respect our elders, but not neglect youth. So many times in classes, individuals would ask me, what does it take in a career to succeed? And we could apply those principles, the Lewis Terman principles to many situations in life, including this very crisis here. And what will it take to succeed, to keep the mental health, to keep us, to keep us alive and well here? And Lewis Terman did a study that lasted 40 years a great American psychologist that invented the IQ formula, lasted 40 years. He took at the time, in the 1920s, the top 1,586 students in the American universities, students that had the highest marks. So in other words, they were the best students. He followed them for 40 years. He wanted to know how many of those students would succeed at an elite level at every important element and aspect of their lives being career, I'm starting with career, but it's not essentially the most important, health, relationships, career, both, and, and, and health being mental health, uh, psychological health, uh, physical health, um, relationships ranging from, from family to community uh, to friends. 
How many would succeed of those top students at elite levels in every important element? The answer, less than 1% did. Then he went back and he took those that did succeed in those important elements of life. What did they have? What did they do that the others didn't have or didn't do? One was confidence. So you need confidence to succeed regardless of the task at hand. So here in this crisis, we need the confidence. We have to have confidence in our governments, in our health experts, in the people advising us. We have to have that confidence. We have to follow procedures and policies and, and the confidence must be there. Two, ambition. Those students that did succeed at those levels, at elite levels, weren't necessarily the highest marks, but they were the most ambitious. So ambition here, how does ambition relate to this crisis? You, have, you never have to use your will, lose your will to survive, your will to succeed, your will to keep having a purpose. Uh, the will is important. The ambition is important. But most of all, most of all, last but not least, is perseverance. The students that did succeed at important levels, at elite levels, had the perseverance, more perseverance than all the others. Because life is a cycle. It's like a roller coaster. Like I said, and uh, uh, this morning, on uh, somebody asked me a quote on health. Uh, health, mental health, or survival, or mental health, it, it, it's, not a, it's, a, it's about the journey. It's not a destination. It's about the journey. It's about family, it's about community, it's about purpose, it's about acceptance, accepting, accepting what we cannot change. And it's about having fun and enjoying the ride. So perseverance is extremely, extremely important. So those are the three elements that I would like to apply, people to apply to this, this, this crisis, if not to mention 12, but to mention three. Remember, confidence, ambition, and perseverance. Thank, thank you so much, um, <laughs> Senator, for those uh, comments. And you're absolutely right to look at how we uh, lead uh, this kind of um, at the forefront of this battle against COVID-19. Uh, I just want to ask you another few questions, actually, around uh, the work that you've been doing, which I think has been really fascinating. Uh, one of the things that we uh, think about now is the issues around mental health. And we know that undoubtedly, uh, during this pandemic and after this pandemic going forward, there'll be millions of people around the world who suffer from uh, mental illnesses. Uh, obviously, people in isolation at the moment, self-containment, uh, people now have been unwell in hospital, coming out, uh, unemployment is rising throughout the world, and there's people looking at that future. There's no question that health is going to be a huge problem uh, as a burden for healthcare as we recover from this illness. Um, can you tell me about what you've been doing on the 30-day mental health challenge, which I think is fascinating uh, for a government to be involved with to improve the lives of their population? Yes, and I think we've got, uh, if you go to the Canadian Senate website, Mental Health, you'll, you'll see the challenge. We're putting, the, the Mental Health Committee has put together a challenge. We've put together a challenge from day one to day 30, a 30-day challenge. And I don't want to share the 30-day challenge because every challenge is different. Uh, it's like you have to adapt it to yourself. And yes, on our challenge, we have one day to uh, yoga, another day to uh, exercise and do some cycling, uh, stationary cycling, adapt it to your own level. First of all, I would suggest in that 30-day challenge, if you take the month, you say, I want to do a 30-day challenge because I'm alone. I'm here with my family, my intimate family, but I'm no longer seeing all my coworkers. What do I like? Put together a list of what is fun for you. What makes you feel good? And then every day, do an activity on that list. And also, it's important to stay mentally challenged for those that are not working, to read. You know, one day, read in detail. Don't just go on to social media. Don't just watch TV. Read. Learn. And there was, a, there was an issue like, uh, you know, uh, how do we're all different. So there's no challenge that's a perfect challenge. And you can all... Uh, we can share it on the website, but adapt your own challenge. What would you like to do in the next 30 days? What would you like to accomplish in the next 30 days? Keep that purpose. I think in life, if I were to use one important word for, for everybody, it's purpose. Life, you have to wake up in the morning with a purpose. What do I want to accomplish today? Some days the purpose could be I'm taking care of myself. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to eat well. I'm going to, be, I'm going to get to bed early this evening. That is the purpose. But most days, a life full of leisure is an empty life. 
So for those of you that are not working, don't make it a COVID-19 life full of leisure with many worries, because when we don't have a challenge, when we don't have a purpose, the little mohills become mountains. The small problems become huge problems. So if you feel that a small problem is taking too much of your thought process, too much of your time, you've got to change your routine and develop a routine. We've got that 30-day challenge. I don't want to go through my 30-day challenge because that's our 30-day challenge, but make your own 30-day challenge. Where would you like to be after 30 days? What would you like to accomplish after 30 days? If somebody tells you, what did you accomplish during the COVID-19 crisis? What is your legacy? Share it. This is what I would like everyone to do. Keep your purpose, have fun, enjoy the ride, regardless of the situation. But stay healthy. Most of all, stay healthy. Well, I like the optimism, Senator. Uh, while at the same time, we all know um, that um, it's, it's not easy with all the, the people who are losing their jobs, uh, small and medium companies who are going to face uh, the hardest time of their lives, uh, the entrepreneurs, the, the founders, the startups who, are, uh, who just started flourishing here in Europe, um, a big time, especially the Central Eastern Europe, but generally Europe, uh, we'll be having a special section on that with Tim Draper um, next week. Uh, on venturing, so all this is is there, and I'm I'm so much. Be I'm, I'm myself a pronoic, right? I believe in the global conspiracy for the the good of the humankind, but still we are facing big troubles and problems. And I would like to involve here in this discussion, if uh, you both of you with uh, Shafi don't mind, to invite uh, Miss Bianca Salonga. Bianca is a correspondent correspondent of uh, Forbes at Forbes, and she will be representing the the questions we are going to have through the audience and her own, obviously. Hello, Bianca. Thanks for joining us. Hi. Thanks, Hi, thanks for having, having me. me. Thank you. Thank you. So, so please, please wrap, wrap up uh, some, some of the questions, questions from the audience, audience and I'm sure you also have your own questions. questions. Uh, uh, if you can, can maybe, maybe bring, bring the whole, whole in, in, uh, in a couple, couple of questions, questions because, because we have, have, uh, we have, have a time, time uh, to follow. follow. Okay, okay, wonderful. wonderful. Um, um, actually, actually, I want, I want to start to ask, ask um, moving, moving forward, forward because I prefer, prefer that we look ahead versus look behind. I was wondering, as a legislator, Senator, what, what bills, bills or laws, laws do you, should the countries, countries look, look into, into so that so they can prevent pandemics, pandemics like this? Or countries should be more ready, ready for a pandemic at this scale. scale. Yes, yes. Well, well very, very important. important. I, I think uh, very, very few expect that expect that this pandemic. pandemic. I, think I think the way we, we look, look at that, that and first, first of all, all as a legislator, legislator, it's important. important. We say it's about the people. Leadership is selfless. It is, it about, is about, about everybody, everybody else. else. So it's, it's about, about the people, what the people, people need. need. And, I, and think I think we have, we have to invest, invest a lot more, more into our health, health systems, systems, into our research. research. Um, and, and we, we did, did talk, talk about globalization and, or regionalization, regionalization at this point. But, but I, I, think, think, I think what is, what is important uh, in such, such a situation is in a pandemic or in, in numerous situations, situations maybe in the health economy or crisis, is you have to stay together. You have to force, react, react on a timely basis, basis and react, react together, together as, a as a whole. Because, because divided, divided, we are not as strong. strong. So, so I think, think when we're looking, looking the challenges, we're looking, we're looking at regionalization, and we're, we're looking, looking at closing our borders. borders. But, but I, I think, think to remain strong, strong we, have we have to share ideas across the globe. We have to share best practices across the globe. And we don't have to make fear take over. So react together on a timely basis and with force. And when I say with force, many of the governments around the world have done it. Economically, they have done it. We have to be able to do it as a medical response also. And I think so there has to be a lot more investment that has to go into our health systems. And I said at the beginning, our heroes may change to all this. Who are our heroes? Uh, and, and, and I don't want to get into who we idolized in the past. Entertainment, entertainment will always be important. And it is important. It remains important. Uh, but, but I think our heroes have to be in the health field also. And if we look at our nurses and we look at our doctors and we look at our specialists. So we have to invest. Legislation is to be able to share best practices around the world. Be able to take advantage of that globalization. 
and keep our people safe. So I, th- I think that's very important. I can get into the economy on the next question. I, I can go on on the economy, what will change. But we realized through the crisis that a clean environment, a lot of the manufacturing uh, facilities have stopped in different parts of the world. The air is much cleaner. We're enjoying that. The cities, in the, city, in the major cities, less, less population, uh, car population, density, pollution. Wow, we go for a walk and we can, so, so the environment is important. Our, our entertainment will change. Restaurants will change. Uh, are we going to be crowded into a restaurant? Uh, you know, our shopping habits have changed. Our online shopping uh, will, will, will take over more and more from brick and mortar shopping. Um, also, if we look, and I'm going through that because legislation is important, what will change for the people? So what legislation will be important going forward? It's what the people need. And we saw now that remote work, it works. People working remotely at times work harder than the people in offices. So will we need all that office space? What will we do with all that real estate space? And, and yes, there will be a recession. Hopefully, hopefully, not a depression, a recession. I'm an optimist. They say optimists live longer. I'm a, I'm a, I am an optimist. So there will be a recession, but hopefully, hopefully we will be able to manage it and we, we, we will be able to manage our debt levels, which were a concern before this crisis. The debt levels around the globe, around the world were a concern. The debt levels of men, many family residences, many homes were a concern around the world. So we have to find a solution for the debt levels, manage those debt levels. And last, I can go on, but last... We've seen now that socialism, and, and, and you know you know my background, I was vice chairman in the biggest bank in Canada, but socialism has now kind of saved capitalism. And a lot of people are looking at universal income as an alternative. We in Canada are now trying to help every citizen that's been affected and is unemployed. We're trying to help. We're trying to give them revenues and keep keep them paying their bills and keep them feeding their families. So I think universal income around the world, and I think even the Pope has spoken about it in his last mass, universal income is becoming an issue in many governments. So this, I think it's about the people. I've gone through maybe seven areas that will drastically change. And I think it's always looking out for the health and the well-being of our people. And health should always be first and not profit uh, or, or corporate uh, uh, priorities, health and the well-being of our people, our, our populations. Absolutely, Senator. If I understand you correctly, you are a supporter of the universal basic income. Is that correct? And if you may, just a, a very short, brief answer, because we are running out of time. We have three, three minutes yes. only left. Yes, in, in different, if it's, if it's put together in a proper format and in a proper way, I am a supporter uh, and Canada has been a great country, and we have a, an exceptional social net in Canada, ranging from universal health care to universal education, which is very accessible. And uh, I am an example of someone that started as an, with an immigrant family. Uh, my mom was seven months pregnant when she came to Canada. My dad worked in a factory at 27 cents a mattress, and I became vice chairman of RBC. And today I'm a Canadian senator, very proud to be in the Canadian Senate. And uh, I'm, an, I'm an example of what... Uh, what a country can 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 do for its citizens, and by having a social net and giving every citizen an equal opportunity, it's about equal opportunity. So if it's well structured, yes, I believe in it. Thank you so much, Bianca. I hope that you have uh, um, closed all the uh, sound and, and shut down all the sound around you. Uh, could you please ask only one more question from the audience because uh, our time is is running up. Thank you so much, Bianca. Thank you. Um, yeah, all right. All right, so um, Bianca, did, did you hear me well? And um, I was just asking you if you can ask one more question from the audience. Oh, okay, sorry about that. Okay. Sorry. sorry. Right, I had another question and this has to do mostly with um, how are health organizations or um, health-centered companies looking to be able to make products and services more accessible 
following COVID, given that we know for a fact that there's going to be a crisis following this? Well, if I can answer that, and, and at a corporate level, uh, you know, it's, it's so important. I think it's quality. I think it's marketing and quality of the products, working, surrounding yourself. It's always about the people. And I always say it's about the people. It's about your credibility, surrounding yourself with great people, great doctors, great researchers, and then getting your product to market. I mean, there will be, a, there, there, there is a crisis. There will be a restart. And I think for companies in the health sector and health industry, the restart will be quicker than in many other industries. And I've mentioned my Senate intervention, my last one, where I look at the people, which industry employs many Canadians that will be touched the most. And I made that intervention that we need specific measures for specific industries. But, you know, if we look at, if we compare the health industries for Restart, for example, we compare the health industry to the accommodation, the food, the entertainment or the culture industry, those industries, the restart will be so difficult. Health industry, the restart is, is going to be a lot simpler because we now understand the importance of health, the importance of research. And I think if I'd have one advice to give today is the people that surround you make you who you are. So surround yourself with great people and including people that can take your product to market. And once they do take your product to market, they have the credibility, they have the, the quality is there and the standards are there according to the country where you live in. The standards have to be there. In, in Canada, we have websites where companies have been applying to supply their goods, their services, their essential equipment, and it is verified. The standards are clear. The policies are clear. Important to know the industry standards, where you're going. And once again, it's about surrounding yourself with great people. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator. It's been a real My honor pleasure. and pleasure to have you with us, um, Shafi. Um, if you don't mind, both of you and Bianca, I'll be seeing you. We'll be seeing you later um, uh, for the, uh, representing the audience and, and yourself as part of the panel. But I took some notes, uh, Senator, and uh, what I what I really what I really liked is the optimism that you filled our our broadcasting with, and the people currently eight thousand people online. And and um, what I took a note is during this crisis, wake up with a purpose. Take a 30-day challenge. What do you want to achieve and share your legacy? Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your legacy okay. with us. Okay. Oh.